Anyways, we're going to start Ghost to Ghost in a moment here on Coast to Coast AM. Get ready. If you've ever received a phone call from someone claiming to be a tech support from your bank, asking for your accountant and information, there's a good chance this person was a phantom hacker. And the FBI is warning of a recent surge, especially among elderly folks, of multi-level phantom hacker scams run by thieves claiming to be tech, bank, and even government employees. And it's so important to understand how cybercrime and identity theft are affecting our lives. Your personal information gets exposed so often, making it dangerously easy for a cyber criminal to steal your identity. And protecting your identity can be easy with LifeLock. LifeLock detects and alerts you to potentially identity threats that you may not spot on your own. And like loans taken out in your name, crimes committed by thieves pretending to be you, if you do become a victim of identity theft, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. It's easy to help protect yourself, though, with LifeLock. Join now. Save up to 25% off your first year with promo code GEORGE. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or head on over to LifeLock.com. Use promo code GEORGE for 25% off. Emails. You're invited to call in with your story. So uh, the lines are open and jump aboard. Let us start by going to Keith in Seattle, Washington to get us started. Keith, welcome to the program. Hey, George. Uh, thanks for having me back. Good Thank you, me. my friend. What, uh, what do you got for us? Oh, I call this the KT Perry Weekend. Uh, this is spring 2014. Um, the activity has returned to the Bothell House. And um, if there ever was a, a, a poltergeist that deals with a uh, preview of coming attractions, this is it. So this started on a Friday. Uh, this is March, April of 2014. Uh, me and my girlfriend, Tina, had the time living in the home. And I'm in my office, upstairs office. It's a weekday night, it's about 8 or 9 p.m.-ish. Typing feverishly on the computer, just doing little stuff, odds and ends. And um, I kid you not, all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, um, the TV in our master bedroom comes blurring on, and it's playing loud music, I mean loud. Um, I get up from my chair and rush to the bedroom. Um, Tina, my girlfriend at the time, is coming upstairs to meet me. She had been downstairs. And we get to the TV, and yes, it's, bl it's playing music, but there's no screen. I mean, the screen is black. Uh, but it's, so, it's showing a music channel, something, it's, it's a music channel or whatever. But it's playing loud music. And it's weird, and Tim looks at me like, why are you turning on the TV loud? I'm like, I didn't turn the TV on. <laughs> I was in my office. Um, so naturally, we look at it for about a few minutes, and I grab the remote control off, off the bed, and I turn the TV off. Okay, problem solved, right? No big deal. TV's weird. Um, I go back to my office. Tina goes back downstairs to do what she's doing. I kid you not, five minutes later, bam, loud music, TV comes on again. Jeez. Now, the second time we meet in the bedroom, again, I, I call Tim and say, hey, TV's back on. We, we meet in the bedroom. We're standing in front of this TV. Once again, black screen, but loud music, okay? Now, I noticed this time, wait a minute, this, this has been about five or six minutes that passed. This is... Why is it playing the same song? It's, it's the same huh. song that's being played, and it's the same lyrics, okay? And it's a Katy Perry song at the time, in 2014, this song, people can look it up, it was a hit. The title of the song, I didn't notice at the time, it's called Dark Horse. That's the name of the song. Uh -huh. Katy Perry's hit. And the lyric I'm hearing is, that it's playing is, or the verse, are you ready for the perfect storm? And I'm paraphrasing because I don't have a list in front of me, but it's going with, are you ready for the perfect storm? Um, you should not play with magic. And because once you're mine, there's no turning back. Now, I'm looking at Tina, she's looking at me, and based on what we've seen already in the house, we know, okay, this is a haunting episode. We need to clock in, and we're at DEF CON 4 now. So I get the remote turn the TV off, and this time, George, this time, I unplugged the TV, okay? And I, I think I little did a, a, a mini happy dance when I did it, because I looked at Tina, I'm like, 
Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Poltergeist, deal with that. I unplugged it. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no power, E equals MC square, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> I go back to my office, Tim goes back downstairs. Another five minutes pass. So mind you, we're not 15 minutes into this, right? And I kid you not, once again, the loud music starts blaring again. Okay? Same tone, same volume level, but high. Now, I, I'm getting out of my chair, going back to the room, knowing, okay, they plug the TV back in. No way. Yeah, that's some nerve. That's some nerve. I'm thinking as I'm walking through the hallway, she just meet me upstairs at the doorway, and, I, and I'm thinking, my, that's, some, that's, some, that's some nerve to plug it. They plug physically it plugged it back in. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That's what I thought. So I get to the TV, and Tina's right behind me. I thought they had plugged it back in, but keep in mind, it's the same song blurring now 15 minutes, and I look at the TV, black screen, loud music playing. The TV is not plugged in. That's impossible. Amazing. That's what I said. The TV, George, the TV is not plugged in. Now, once again, it's the same song, now, Katy Perry's song, people can do it, it's less than five minutes long. Okay, we're not 15 minutes into this. And the song is playing the same verse. It's, it's using some Xfinity or Comcast at the time, streaming music channel, and it's playing Katy Perry's Dark Horse. <clears throat> and I didn't know that at the time. I just remember the lyrics. I remember Katy Perry, and I went back in my computer and Googled it, and I was like, oh, that's what it meant. But me and Tina did stand in front of the TV, and then I listened to the lyrics as it's blaring in our ears. It's like... Are you ready for the perfect storm? Do you want to play with magic? And once you're mine, there's no turning back. That's the verse that's we playing or playing now 15 minutes into this black screen, um, but the music channel dial, you know, the little channel on the bottom corner lets you know what music channel you're on, um, is 666. I never used, used, listened to music through my television. Why, why were they playing around with you, Keith? What did they want from you? Well, I, like I said, this was the preview or precursor of coming attraction because we had had no activity the year before 2013, but we did it 2012, and the activity returned in 2014. Did you ever figure out that who the, the who? that was the linchpin? After that day or night, you could say it was all downhill. The first Bible to catch fire would happen 72 hours later. So they was telling us, or it, whatever, you know, three times, you know, that, that number three, three times, three times the charm. Are you ready for the perfect storm? A Bible caught fire? Yeah, this was Friday night. This happened on a Friday. The first Bible to catch fire in our home happened Sunday night, Monday morning. Oh, my God. And that, and going back to that Friday, I remember they, you know, you could say they kind of warned us because they were like, hey, we're back. We're back in town, get ready for business. Um, and keep in mind, this was Friday. We had major activities Saturday, Sunday. Sunday was the big bang of it all with the Bible uh, catching fire. But from that point on, I meaning spring of 2014, of the large objects, small and medium objects being thrown, waking up, waking up, finding all your kitchen cabinet doors wide open. Uh, missing objects, Tina's missing jewelry, my missing car. Jeez, did you ever get rid of them? Uh, I eventually moved out. It was just too much to handle, but, you know. Long so so they, they, they stayed in the house. They didn't follow you. Well, that's another story for another day. They did follow me. That, that's, that's, an, that's another one for next year, Keith. Thanks. But you're lucky you've got your sanity with you. I'd go nuts after that. Steve in Albany, New York, our friend, the cab driver. Hi, Stephen. Yeah, you didn't ask me after. Uh, I, 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 I droned off, and you didn't ask me, did I ever have any paranormal experiences with my three hearses? Did you ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't ask you. <laughs> Not what? But remember when you interviewed me with the, cat, with the guy in the in the car that was a serial killer? Yep. I left something out, and that was about two weeks before that. I looked in, I was parking the car, backing up into a 
parking space uh, at the end of my shift, and I looked, and there was a space staring at me from the mirror, <clears throat> the rear mirror. And I turned around real fast, and it was gone. Just gone. Oof. And I, and then <laughs> I had a dream that night in which the face came back, and I was involved with some sort of court hearing. And running through this real quick, the face was the guy that two weeks later robbed me. That was the serial killer. Oh, my gosh. And the courtroom was when I had to do the um, grand jury to put him away for life. That was in my taxi paranormal. Jeez. Not a hearse. Where is this guy now? Is he still in prison? Oh, he's going to be in prison until he's like uh, 80 years old. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the crimes he did, but how many people did he? Come, how many people did he kill, Stephen? He killed two, but the FBI says now that when you have two unrelated murders, you have the beginning of a serial killer. I put him away. I helped put him away before he started a spree. He was just starting. And what he did to one of the corpses, I can't tell you on... Uh, no, we, we, don't, we don't want to hear that. I can only imagine. It's not what you think, but it could be what you think. It, uh, he, uh, and it's what put him away for the rest of his life. And it, it, it just... It, 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 the guy is just trash. And I had one guy picked up in my hearse... I'm not my first, my taxi one day, and he said, you're the guy that uh, had uh, the guy who murdered the guy in the barber shop. Uh, you're the guy that helped put him away. And I said, yes. And he goes, I thank you. That was one of my best friends, and I was hoping that somebody would catch him. Wow, he knew. He knew. Thanks for the call, Steve. And you're lucky you're still around with us after that. Barb in Boise, Idaho, first-time caller. Hello, Barbara. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. What do you got for us? Well, I'm just calling to, I, I'm a first time caller. I've listened to uh, you and Art Bell since 93. Since well, thank you. Thanks for sticking with us. And it's been uh, since 2009. My husband and I lost our beautiful son. He was six foot six, kind of tall like you, because we saw you when you came to Boise. And he had this uh, disease, and it got him, okay? It just got him, and he died at 32 years old. Oh, Jesus. Which is very young, right? Oh, very young. So Sorry we, to hear that. Very, yes. So we did not know what, you know, we knew he wanted to be cremated, but we didn't know where he wanted his ashes to be spread. So we held on to him. You know, I had him on my, he loved music, so I had him on my stereo, and he's like, always thanked me for my music and my love of different sounds, right? Yeah. So we decided, okay, we, it's gotta, we gotta do this. So my husband and I took him to a favorite place we thought he would like to go. He loved, he was a fly fisherman, being so tall, excellent arm, beautiful fly fisherman. Mm-hmm. And he was a, motorcyclist. They love to ride motorcycles um, and four weeks. So we took him and we decided, okay, this is what we're going to do. So we spread him around in different spots in his favorite places here in Idaho. And we sat down by the fire and we're both, you know, kind of wondering, did we do the right thing? Did we do the right thing? But we had his urn, and his urn was wooden, and on the outside of the urn was a fly fisherman. Uh-huh. And so we put it in the fire, and I kid you not, I am telling you the truth, and I'm fighting back tears to do this, because I wrote this down so I would never forget it. I'm going to be 68 here in November, and I'll never forget it. You will never forget this. And we're looking at this fire, and we're crying, and we're saying, Scotty, I hope we did the right thing. I hope we did the right thing. This is where you want to be. And you know what? That flame turned into a motorcyclist with his blue and white signature chest protector and his helmet. 
And we knew we did the right thing. My God. Was it life-size? It was just in the flames. You just saw him. You know, you're sitting in a chair. At a wow. Chair. It's not life-size. It's just in the flames right in front of your eyes. And clearly, and you, you both clearly saw this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we knew. What an incredible message from your son. His, his birthday was the 11th of November. Mine's the 12th. My husband's is the 13th. Of course, different years. But we just knew we felt that connection at that moment. You and sure it was, did, Bob. It was the most wonderful thing. And one more thing i got to tell you. You guys have missing, you are missing J.C. We know who J.C. is. We grew up with him. He was a wonderful person, but he has passed. Oh, really? Really. I, Tom, Tom has his number, uh, Barb. We'll have him check that just to be sure. But uh, thank you for that. To talk to George Norrie, call the wild card line at 818-501-4109. The first time caller line is 818-501-4721. To talk toll free from east of the Rockies, call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies, toll free, call 800-618-8255. To reach George via Skype, use Skype name George97313. Send George a text message anytime at 818-298-6521. This is Ghost to Ghost AM with George Norrie. And shook his fist and said, It's now the match. And we're going to be back with more Ghost to Ghost calls, and then we're doing it again next hour here on Coast to Coast as well. ParanormalDate.com keeps cruising along. 465 people shy of 177,000 members at ParanormalDate.com. That's where you go if you want to find a date. Now, if you're looking for a date or friendship with somebody maybe a bit more mature, you can head over to ParanormalDate.com slash seniors. These are folks that think like you do. They relate to what you think, and they're just a bit more mature. They're 60 plus. So we have both ParanormalDate.com, that's for everybody, and ParanormalDate dot com slash seniors at paranormaldate.com you meet the most fantastic people hi i'm tom hi i'm jennifer what brings you here yeah i'm here to meet someone who understands me how so well i'm into ufos ghosts aliens bigfoot conspiracy theories uh, the paranormal uh, that kind of stuff but can't seem to find anyone who gets it oh well um nice to meet you tom i, I gotta go uh, uh okay guess that's not your cup of tea? Are you sure? Very. Good luck with that. I can't meet anyone when I'm out, and I really can't find a website for my unique interests. What is one to do? Have you thought about ParanormalDate.com? Para what dot what? Who are you? I'm a paranormal matchmaker, and it's ParanormalDate.com. It's a website for people looking for people like them. Stuff you like, remember? Interesting. Uh, I'll give it a try. Well, let's try this again. Uh, hi, I'm Tom. Hey, I'm Deb. Your profile on ParanormalDate.com looked very interesting. So you really saw a UFO? Well, yeah. It was so intense. But not as intense as meeting you. You're an alien chasing flirt, but I kind of like it. Wow, this ParanormalDate.com thing really works. Maybe ParanormalDate.com is for you. People with an interest in things they hear on George's show find their match daily. So if you're looking for that special someone with an interest in UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot, conspiracy theories, and, of course, the paranormal, come to the dating site inspired by George Nori. It's always free to search, and if you decide to upgrade to our amazing new features, use promo code GEORGE for a great discount. ParanormalDate.com. You are not alone. You know, we're up against another possible government shutdown later this month, and our leaders deal with it how they always do, more spending. While the lawmakers are jumping for joy, their savings account continues to value and lose value, and so does yours, because more spending weakens the dollar. End the cycle. Diversify into gold with the help of the Birch Gold Group. And listen, when you open up an IRA for every $10,000 you spend by December 22nd, Birch Gold would send you a free gold bar 
Simply text COAST to 989898 to claim eligibility before Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving. Birch Gold can help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA for no money out of pocket. And you still get the free gold bars as well. Don't let your savings become a victim of further devaluation of the dollar. Buy gold from Birch Gold. Text COAST to 989898. Receive a free info kit on gold and claim that eligibility before Black Friday to receive free gold bars on your qualifying purchase. I, I can't believe I'm I'm actually talking to you. You made it. Thank you for calling. How you been? I it, it's been a great it's been a great Halloween. Uh, it's, it's a great Halloween every year because it's my birthday. So oh, uh, well, happy birthday, Rich. That's thanks. great. I appreciate it. What do you got for us? All right. So let me tell you about you know. And last night, I, I believe you were talking to somebody about sleep paralysis. Yes. It was really eye opening to me because. My ghost story, which, I mean, this is a firsthand experience. This is an I heard from a friend who heard from a friend story. This was, this was my story. And I never really thought about, you know, what happened beyond what happened until I, I, I listened to that guest last night. So I'm going to look into this more. But the year was, well, I don't, to be honest, I don't even remember what year it was. I guess it was doing the math uh, I'm 30 years ago. Um, I, I had realized I was a, I was a TV news anchor in uh, Toledo, Ohio. Oh, really? And Not 50 miles out of Detroit, which is my hometown. Ah, there you go. I was, I was at the NBC affiliate, and uh, it was one of the greatest places I ever lived, and I loved going up to Detroit and going to the old Tiger Stadium and seeing it sitting out by K-Line's Corner, and uh, yeah, that's a great, great part of the country. What channel but was I, WS, was it WSPD? No, it was uh, WNWO. Okay. The, uh, the, yeah, ch Channel 24. I was at WJBK when you were out uh, there. Awesome. Well, I, I, I had realized that I, I had really never been anywhere in my life. And so uh, I, I one day just, it was, my birthday was coming up. And so I went into my news director's office and I said, listen, I, I, my birthday's coming up. I'm about to turn 30. Uh, and I'm realizing I have really, besides Canada and Mexico, I've never been anywhere. So effective immediately, boss, I'm taking a month off. And I, that day I went and bought a Rick Steves travel guide, a plane ticket and a backpack, and I flew to Europe the next day. Wow. And I just walked around Europe for a month, and it was the best month of my life. And so the whole time that I'm in Europe, and I, I started in London, made my way to France, made my way to Ireland, and now the month is up, and so I'm now heading back to London to catch my flight home. And the whole time I'm staying at youth hostels, just dirty little nasty youth hosp hostels, but it was... ...cheap, and it was, you know what, I'm just going to stay somewhere nice, just a, just a nice hotel. And so in my travel guide, uh, I found this place, which turned out to be like some 400-year-old travel lodge that people used to stay at. So I, I checked in, and it was a great place. It had a nice little pub on the first floor, and I had, I, I still remember to this day, I had some kind of ham sandwich and one pint of Guinness. Uh, and, I, and, and, and so I was not drunk. I just, I had one beer. That was it. And so I then, after that, went upstairs to my room, and it was great to be able to take a bath and, and to lay in a, a real bed and watch TV, <laughs> and then I fell asleep. And, George, I always sleep the same way. I sleep like a rock, and I sleep, you know, face down, arms under the pillow, and I'm sound asleep. And, George, I am, I, this has never happened before in my life, and it hasn't happened since. In the middle of the night, I literally felt somebody fall on top of me. Oh, boy. I mean, literally fall on top. And not just like, okay, somebody like sitting on your back, but lengthwise from head to toe, I felt something just come into me. As it just, they just melted in. My head was their head. My toes were their toes. And 
it woke me up immediately, and I could not move. I, it was just like I was paralyzed. And I felt myself struggling to get up just to find out what the heck, heck is going on with me. And it, it only lasted for probably seconds, but I couldn't even open my eyes. And I felt myself straining and struggling to open my eyes. And when I did open my eyes, it was like I was looking through somebody else's eyes. I remember the room being almost a purplish gray, and everything was hazy. Like in the old days when you just turned on your TV set that was fuzzy for the first minute until it warmed up. But it was like looking out somebody else's eyes, and then whoosh, it was gone. And from head to toe, I just felt this tingle. And after a few minutes, it was like, okay, what was that? And I just sat up and I watched TV the rest of the night. This could have been so, the old hag syndrome on you. I, I, I have no idea. So here's the, here's the crazy part now. So the next morning, I go downstairs to the front desk, and I'm paying to, you know, before I leave. Yeah. And I said jokingly to the front desk person, I, hey, I really think I only owe half, half the amount. And she said, why? And I said, well, I think I, I, think I spent the night with a ghost in my room. And she was like, oh, God, let me, let me guess. You were, you were laying in your bed, and it felt like somebody was, like, laying right on top of you. Oh, whoa. And, and then when you tried to open your eyes, it was like looking through somebody else's eyes, and then, boosh, it was gone. And I, I just stood there, just my jaw dropped, and I'm like, ma'am, that is exactly what happened to me. And she just very casually said, oh. that, that was Jack, and he does this all the time. Oh, my God. And, and I'm like, uh, you're, you're going to have to explain who Jack is and what you mean by that. And she said, about 150 years ago, when the previous owner owned the place, there's the bar. You know, you've been in, you, were, you had to drink in the bar last night. She said, somebody was stealing some of the whiskey. And so the owner had the bright idea of, oh, here's a bottle. I won't serve this one to anybody, but I'll put a little bit of rat poison in it. Oh, my and God. The sick is the person who's drinking from that bottle and stealing my whiskey. Well, she said there was this groundskeeper named Jack who they ended up finding him dead because apparently he drank too much of the bottle with too much of the rat poison. And ever since... He has been haunting this hotel, and he's been doing exactly that to all of the guests. Jack is not a happy camper, is he? Jack is not a happy camper. But, I mean, just to be able to have that experience, and then less than, you know, five, six, seven hours, somebody described to me exactly what happened to me in my room, blew me away, made me a believer. That's a great story. Is that on the Internet at Ulrich? Can you yeah. find uh, this place? They've kept it quiet, haven't they? You know, it, and the funny thing is, George, I have for years said, I want to go back. I want to go back to this place. I want, even if I went with my wife or my kids, I need my own room because I want to reenact this whole thing and see if it happens again. Because, you know, it's one of those things, George, where, where you tell a story over and over again for years and years and years, and, and you know you're telling it exactly as you remember it. But it, it makes you wonder to yourself, is that exactly how it happened, yeah. you know, when it's that so many years ago? But that is, that is what I remember to a T, but I would love to go back and try and experience this again. That's a great story, Rich. Thanks for sharing that with us. Absolutely. Again, pleasure being on the show. Love the show. God bless you for what you keep, you're keep. you doing and getting the truth out there. That's fantastic. What a great story. Bill in Los Angeles, welcome to the program. Hey, Bill. Hey, happy Halloween, George. You too, my friend. How have you been? Okay. Uh, I, I want to, if I could, um, I want to attempt something never done before on radio. I'd like to remotely view a future broadcast of your Ghost to Go show and channel it back so your listeners can hear about 60 seconds of your Halloween program from 2025. All right. Let's give it a try. Okay. Uh, here goes. <laughs> From the city of Fallen Angel, deep inside the People's Republic of California, welcome to Ghost to Ghost 2025. Tonight's scary Halloween panel includes Joe Pesci, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Bigfoot. Good to have you back, Mr. Foot. Say hello to Joe Pesci. Go home alone. 
so you think I'm a funny guy, huh? Like a little clown or something? Do I amuse you? Indeed, Joe, clowns are not funny. Say hi. Me, no, like you, Sasquatch. Don't monkey around with Arnold. You're nothing but a smelly gorilla, man. Why, that tells me Sasquatch just hung up the phone back, Tommy. Meanwhile, some exciting news for seniors. Paranormal night is just out of this world. But don't tell Hillary I said so. Later on, those scary open lines costing only $500 per minute. So get those credit cards ready. Back in a moment with Ghost to Ghost 2025. <laughs> well done, Billy. <laughs> well done. The good news, you're still alive in 2025. That's right. We're going to keep going. That Pesci line was from Goodfellas, wasn't it? Right, right. <laughs> One of the classics. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot. All right, Bill. Thanks for sharing that with us, creative as he is. Let's go to Tom in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Hey, Thomas, go ahead. Hey, George, how are you doing? Okay, pretty good. Thanks for having me on your show. Thank you. Um, I have a story. It's like three parts. The first uh, part of the report on is I was in a car accident when I was 13 years old on Christmas morning of all things. It was like a, a head wound, and, but it was fatal. I was declared physically dead three times. Oh, my God. Yeah. When I came back from the hospital well, three weeks later, I saw a spatial challenge. Uh, the Challenger of Columbia first exploded. I can't remember which. Do you know? Spaceship Columbia. Challenger or Columbia? I don't remember. Challenger was around 1985, I think. Oh, okay, and Challenger was. Um, oh, and Columbia came uh, after that. The first memory I have was getting awake, looked up the television, and I saw Challenger explode. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, it That's blew right. blew right up in front of all of us. Yeah, it was horrifying. And uh, I, just, I thought to myself, well, Star Trek just died. And I had died, went to hell over Christmas. So when I went out to the garage to hang myself. You tried to hang yeah. yourself? At his 13, yeah. Oh my God, Tom. And yeah, I don't have any ideation of it anymore. I mean, I'm not even thinking about self harm. That's good. So was, and aren't you glad you didn't succeed? Uh, quite. I'm, I'm very happy because I can do things for other people, as the case may be. Um, and a couple of years later, like, I think that's when I was working at a restaurant in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. It's called the Stephen Stafford. It's like a five-star Irish pub, hotel, restaurant. And I was a prep uh, sous chef, a prep cook. I went in one of the uh, things I had to do was restock the shelves. So I went into the basement to the freezer, large walk-in freezer. I opened it up, turned the light on, and there's a figure hanging from the middle light fixture. In the freezer? Yeah, an astral figure. Oh, jeez. It was unnerving, especially when it pulled itself up on its knees and ran directly at me. What did, what did they want? I have no idea. I was thinking that what may have happened when I saw the uh, phantasm in, in, the, um, in, the, in the cooler. They may have been resonant of my uh, suicide. Could have been, but didn't in the past. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to say the same thing, that uh, it could have been a part of your soul that uh, you yeah. would have ended up like had you succeeded. I'm really glad I didn't because I, you know, you know, I've had a hard life. I learned a bunch of things. No matter how tough it gets, Tom, nothing's worth that. You know that. That's correct. That is correct. It's like a self. All right. Thanks for sharing that. That's gutsy of you to tell us that. I appreciate that. That's Thomas in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. We've got the, well, let's see, coming up on about a minute or so. Let's just chit-chat for a little bit. We're going to come back for another hour to go of special ghost-to-ghost -ghost open lines, and I'm having a great time. This is fantastic. By the way, some program notes for you. We're going to be live on Thanksgiving night. I'll be here. 
Christmas this year is on Monday, Christmas Eve. One of our weekend hosts will be doing that show for you, so we'll have it live. You know the deal, no tapes on holidays. And uh, I'll be live on Christmas night for you with some special effects and some special guests and uh, your calls, of course. And then New Year's Day is on a Monday. We'll be live on that night for you, too, so we'll get you through the holidays. We're going to get into 2024, and then we're going to do it all over again, folks. We're going to just keep doing it as long as we can. As the good Lord gives us this opportunity to keep pushing, we will. Our website, of course, is coasttocoastam.com, as uh, Bill in Los Angeles was talking about. Paranormaldate.com is available to you. If you're available, I don't want anybody who's married signing up on that thing. Go to ParanormalDate.com. We'll be back with another hour to go of Ghost to Ghost. So get ready to make the call when we come back on Coast to Coast AM with you. And let's have some fun. Talk to George Norrie. Call the wild card line at 818-501-4109. The first time caller line is 818-501-4721. To talk toll free from east of the Rockies. Call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies, toll free. Call 800-618-8255. To reach George via Skype, use Skype name George97313. Send George a text message anytime at 818-298-6521. This is Ghost to Ghost AM. With George Norrie. Are you going to be able to sleep tonight? We're listening to these ghost stories. Incredible. Well, we've got another hour to go with them when we come back. The FBI is warning of a recent surge, especially from elderly victims of multi-level phantom hacker scams run by thieves claiming to be high-tech, bank, and even government employees. And it's so important to understand how cybercrime and identity theft affect our lives. Your personal information gets exposed so often, making it dangerously easy for a cyber criminal to steal your identity. Protecting your identity can be easy with LifeLock. LifeLock detects and alerts you to potential identity threats that you may not spot on your own. Loans taken out in your name. Crimes committed by thieves pretending to be you. And if you do become a victim of identity theft, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. And it's easy to help protect yourself with LifeLock. Join now. Save up to 25% off your first year with promo code GEORGE. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or head on over to LifeLock.com. Use promo code GEORGE for 25% off. Uh, that was amazing. And the lady who saw her son in the fire. Yes. Those are all great Just, stories. And i, I got to say, I'm truly sad if uh, indeed that is true about J.C. Well, we got to check into that. Thank God yeah. Louisa from Kentucky is alive. <laughs> we, yeah, that scammer called you and killed her. We can't lose everybody. So, you know, maybe <laughs> J.C. would call in and say, I'm alive. <laughs> well, I did send him a text, so we'll see. See what happens. Does his phone work? Well, it went through, so yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Ghost to Ghost calls for the rest of the hour. And let's pick it up by going to John, truck driving in Ohio to get us started. Hey, John, welcome. Hi, George. Uh, man, I'll tell you what, I'm becoming a regular. You got me hooked. Uh, um, super. It I'm, makes your trip go quicker. Yeah, I'm actually from Toledo, too. I'm going up to Detroit tonight to uh, take a Pepsi to a Pepsi plant on Mack Avenue up there. Are you familiar with that? I sure am, absolutely. My son's yeah. in Detroit right now on business, and uh, he's up there seeing his grandmother and uh, all is well. Good. Well, I got a story for you that happened to me probably 12, 15 years ago. I had a metal detector, and I used to go out all the time. And particularly, I think it was a weekend, Sunday morning, and I was driving up the highway, and I'd always look for places. I never noticed a house. It was an old farmhouse run down, and it was like hidden behind me. So I thought, oh, I'll try my luck here. I started finding certain things. Well, I dug up, and I found this looked like a medallion or coin. It had Zodiac on the front with the sun. And on the back, I couldn't make out. It had some lettering, and it was kind of oxidized. So, uh, okay, took it, washed it up. 
turn it into a keychain. Well, within about a week or so, some bad things start happening to me. I had gotten into a car accident. Uh, three weeks later, I lost my job, and then oh, a months later, my wife and I were going to get a divorce. And we were separated. Uh, I started saying something to a friend, and I go, God, it sounds like someone put a, put a curse on you. And when he said that, I thought, you know what? Ever since I've had this thing, that's what's happened. So I took it to a pawn shop to try to get information. The guy said it had no intrinsic value. I said, can you give me a date? He said, probably early, uh, early 19th, 20th century, I mean. And, and he said, I said, I can't make out the back. And he goes, it looks like something there in Latin, but that's Stonehenge. That's Stonehenge there. And I go, oh. So I, I, I didn't tell him what was going on. So I took it to the priest, my father, and I said, you know, didn't you tell me about this? I found this. I turned it into a keychain. He told him, I told him what was happening to me, and he looked, and he said, that's not Latin. And I said, it's not. And he goes, get rid of this as soon as you can. Oh, jeez. Immediately. And I, he didn't, his face was somber about it. it. That scared me. So I didn't want to just throw it on the street and have someone else pick it up and have something happen to him. Right. So I go back, I go back, probably like a few days working my nerve up, and I, I went to sleep, and something tells me, just take it back. So I went back to the place, and it just, it looked different. It just looked creepy to me. And I went to try to find the place that I dug it up. I didn't find the exact hole, but I went down far. I had a trowel. I went down far, probably a good eight to ten inches, and I put it in the hole, and I took a rosary with me, and I put a rosary over the top of it, and then I buried it, covered it up. And it wasn't immediately, but a few weeks later, I got a better job with better pay. Uh, my wife and I reconciled. We never got the divorce. The things were better ever since then. That's amazing. And, yeah. What, I, what I did the priest, John, what did the priest see that scared him so much? He flipped it over. When he saw the Zodiac, that wasn't so much, but the lettering. And I don't know. All I can imagine, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was Latin, but when he... He didn't touch the lettering or do anything. He just looked at it. And I said, the pawn shop said that that's Stonehenge. And he just kind of got a concentrated look on it. And he was trying to make out the lettering. Because it, it started from the top, like a penny would say, in God we trust. But it would start at the top, and it had these, I don't know if you want to say symbols or lettering. And it went all the way around like a horseshoe. And when he saw that, his face got somber, and he said, get rid of this. Now. I wonder if that's satanic. Satanic, or I thought Celtic or something, but, you know, this farmhouse was way off in the, off the beaten path. And years ago, this doesn't, you know, come back to me until now, but every now and then you would hear stories of where people would make sex. They'd find animals dead, and they were, you know, yep. devil sacrifices. And I never thought, wow, that could have been part of that. But it, he, the the pawn shop guy said it was at one point it was a medallion. But uh, he probably I, doesn't know. No, but he said it looks like it was a medallion and it was brass, and he said it had no intrinsic value. But you know, that's when he told me it was Stonehenge. But I turned it into a keychain, and almost immediately I started having that. I mean, bad luck. I mean, no, no, satanic dreams or nothing like that. But just. And, and when I did take that back and I covered it, it, I had a feeling of relief, like, like wow, I'm, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like something was just lifted off of me. Yeah, like 20 tons gone. Great story, John. Thanks for sharing that with us. Really appreciate that. Next up, let's go to Robert in New York. Robert, you are up. Hello, George. Uh, Hello, Robert. To speak to you again. And, uh... I have, a, I think, a very interesting story, uh, a couple of other points I'd like to make after that, but uh, okay. it relates to a sacred uh, land uh, of the indigenous peoples of the Onondaga Nation, uh, and uh, this is a place called 13 Curves, and it's on the way uh, 
to Skinny Atlas, where the Clintons have uh, vacationed over the past years. Okay. And uh, it is a a very interesting uh, story that has been passed down generations. But there was a young bride and her husband. Uh, they just got married, left the church apparently, and went down 13 curves on a rainy night. Uh, and uh, didn't make it around one of those curves and ended up crashing into a tree and being killed. Oh. And as they died, uh, they, the story is that she still walks at night uh, in her wedding uh, dress, usually in the rain. And I was con on my way to Scanny Atlas, New York at the time, uh, to the lake there, and... I was going up Cherry Valley, where it's called Route 20, and just as I come to the 13 curves, just before that, there's a very steep hill, and there's a guardrail there and a big drop off where nobody, and this was driving rain, pitch dark, and I'm on my way, as I say, going west, and up this long incline of a hill, and I know it very well, and there was... You could barely drive in the driving rain. However, along the right side going with the traffic next to the guardrail, there was a long guardrail. Nobody would ever get across there and jump up to the side. There was this woman in a wedding dress <laughs> walking in the rain and trying to be a good Samaritan as I... My effort was to, I, I went past it, and I said, oh my gosh, what in the world is anybody out in the rain like without an umbrella and so forth? So I turned around immediately, uh, did a 180, and came back to try to pick her up. Well, as we were going down the incline, I saw her again for the second time. But then I went past a little bit too far, and I turned around again and came back within a minute. And I turned around and went back to asked her if she would like to get out of the rain and have a ride to her home or wherever she was going, but it was van the woman in the wedding dress, white wedding dress, vanished and uh, disappeared, and I couldn't find her. And I went back and forth several times trying to find her, stopped and looked over the side with a big drop-off. Nobody would have gone over that railing, and I, looked, I just looked everywhere for her. I couldn't find her. How heavy was the rain? Well, <laughs> she she has been known to be seen by other people over the years. And I was just wondering, is there any connection between Halloween and orbs and uh, orbs as a uh, perhaps a spirit of some sort? And I was hoping sometime you could have uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi back on to give us an update on where does America stand uh, in our in our uh, safety regarding. Uh, the uh, current state of what's on the brink of World War III here and uh, see what his take was on the transfer or the um, the Israeli uh, conflict there with Hamas and then uh, Ukraine as this is not a prelude to what's going to happen here in America and his take on it as a political scientist. I know him personally. He's a great, uh, uh, honest, uh, in, you know, a visionary and and an excellent uh, analyst regarding the realities of the world today, and I really would appreciate his uh, uh, sharing his insight as to is America under assault, under attack, or are we? Go is this training ground? Those other two wars for bringing it here? Is it is it was 9/11 um, just a, another prelude to war on our front doorsteps here in America? Well, it's funny you bring him up because he just contacted me last week. He has a new book out, so we're working on that. And in terms of orbs and Halloween, I don't think there's any connection between that. The uh, orbs just pop up when they pop up. Next up, let's go to Mary Sue in Wisconsin, east of the Rockies. Hi, Mary Sue. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, George. It's a pleasure, and I'm happy to be on. And my story is more of a poltergeist type story. I'm retired now, but years ago this happened to me. 
um, I was the manager of a very old bar, and it was uh, used to be like an old railway station. They had some railroad tracks that went by, and they had rooms for rent upstairs, you know, back in the day. Yeah. And uh, when I became the manager, they said, you know, this place is haunted. And I said, yeah, okay, great. Um, anyway, the one thing that happened while I was there was that the beer delivery guy came. It wasn't while, usually I'm there, but it wasn't while I was there this particular time. And he went downstairs to the walk-in, and he got locked in. Uh, oh. Now, if you know anything about walk-in coolers, there's a push bar. You can get out. It's like an emergency. It's an emergency bar that you push, right? Correct. Yes. And he said that he was pushing on that thing and trying to get out. And when he finally got out, about oh, I guess it was about 45 minutes later, um, someone went down to see what's taking him so long, and they had no problem opening the door. He, you know, they tested it. You know the. The bartender that was on went inside and said, okay, to the beer man, stand here and make sure I can get out. And everything was fine. And uh, a couple months later, this is what happened to me. Um, I was closing up. And this is a really old bar, very tall ceilings. And up around the edges, there's kind of like a shelf. And there's all these knickknacks and follow on. There was a wind-up music box up there. You know, I never even noticed it. They had all these different things. You couldn't reach it. It's always been up there, you know. And uh, it was that way up high on the ledge. And uh, I was putting on my coat, and um, everything's locked up. Nobody's there. I took one or two steps towards the door to lock it up. And boom. This uh, wind-up music box fell at my feet, and it broke into like a million pieces, wow. except for uh, two uh, things that were left that I could read. Apparently, it was around the bottom of the music box, some lettering, and all it said was, uh, the two pieces was, help me, and the other piece that I could read said, go home. Wow. Did you take heed? Well, I got the heck out of there, I'll tell you. <laughs> it is now a parking lot. They tore it down, so... Um, but, yeah, I I then was pretty wary of the ghost where I was a bar manager years ago. Good for you. I'm glad you're still around, Mary Sue. <laughs> Wayne in Tacoma, Washington. Hey, Wayne, welcome. Good evening, Sir George. Yes, uh, I had a ritual uh, with my kids growing up i used to tell them a bedtime story uh the favorite was the three bears and i would tell that to them almost every night they just yeah. loved it i would do a dramatic telling of it and uh this one night you know i noticed my son was a little peaked and i began tucking him into the bed and he tells me daddy check for monsters under my bed oh boy so i look underneath for his amusement and see him, another him, under the bed, staring back at me. You saw your Where son under the bed quivering. looking back at you? Yes. Wow. And he was quivering and whispering and said, Daddy, there's somebody on my bed. Whoa. So the real son was hiding under the bed. The ghostly imposter was on top of the you got it, George. Whoa, what happened? Huh? Did you did you look back up and was the, the, the entity still there? I went to bed. <laughs> you went to bed. I couldn't go back to sleep. <laughs> it's a great story. Thank Thanks, Wayno. You bet. I'll tell you a little bit of Stokos, and we're going to come back with more Go to Ghost stories, by the way. Jeff Dunn is going to be one of our guests. He's going to be talking about uh, artificial intelligence and what's really happening there. And then we're going to talk about a true story of aliens, demons, and pure evil in the state of Texas with Pat O'Connell, who includes 
all kinds of things from Utah Skinwalkers Ranch and uh, things like that. So he's uh, part of the program, and I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be on our next Coast to Coast show. And, um, again, our website is Coast to Coast AM. You can email me through that website and get right to me, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We get about 2,000 emails a day, so sometimes we don't get back right away. But we do our best to try to, or at least somebody will. So we'll be back in a moment with more Ghost to Ghost stories right here for you on Coast to Coast AM. So don't touch your dial. Those of you on hold, we'll do our best to get to all of you. To talk to George Norrie, call the wild card line at 818-501-4109. The first time caller line is 818-501-4721. To talk toll free from east of the Rockies, call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies, toll free, call 800 800- 618-8255. To reach George via Skype, use Skype name George97313. Send George a text message anytime at 818-298-6521. This is Ghost to Ghost AM with George Nori. And we'll be back with more Ghost to Ghost calls in just a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Beyond Belief, that is our television program, and we invite you to sign up at beyondbelief.com. We sure do. Just head over to that website right now. What we've done is put some ad-free episodes there, completely free. Just watch those, check them out, have some fun, and then there's a seven-day free trial that you can sign up for. That'll get you access to a ton more shows that we've done. It's beyondbelief.com. And try out our free YouTube channel. How did they do that, Tommy? <laughs> well, first of all, they're going to plan for your whole day because it's just hours of interviews of recent and past shows, and it's all for free. You head over to coasttocoastam.com. Go to the top. There's a YouTube icon. Click that. It's free, like you just said, and it's so much fun. A lot of people are getting sick these days. Build up your immune system. HealthyLooking.com and Dr. Alan Malay bring four decades of experience in natural products for the exclusive stem cell wellness kit that works with your body's stem cells to assist your immune system. Here's Dr. Malay with more. Whether it's physical activity, obesity, diet, smoking, low on hormones, stress, sleep disorders, or your age can be supported by reducing inflammation and aiding the body to heal itself appropriately. A stem cell is a cell waiting to be told what it needs to be. If there is inflammation, that inflammation needs to be stopped. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, kidney disease, various types of cancer, depression, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune disorders, osteoporosis, even fatty liver are chronic signs of inflammation and can be aided by supporting the body's ability to protect those cells that it needs. And that is the purpose of ImmuStem and Adaptostim together, supporting the body to be the best it can be. Dr. Malay, how will I feel after taking Adaptostim and ImmuStem? The ImmuStem is going to have an immediate effect, but I tell you, your immune system is starting to function better after 24 hours. You put Adaptostim along with it, and most will feel it within 30 minutes. Order now at HealthyLooking.com. The stem cell wellness kit from Dr. Malay protects your body's stem cells and will make you feel better faster. The stem cell wellness kit with Adaptostim and ImmuStem and your free gift Relaxol is only available at HealthyLooking.com or toll-free at 800 563 3980. That's 800-563-3980. Don't forget to enter promo code GEORGE for free shipping. George's Stem Cell Wellness Kit at HealthyLooking.com. That's HealthyLooking.com. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, they're all coming up pretty darn fast. And before your life goes into overdrive with these holidays, protect your home with Simply Safe Home Security, and you can get a brand new system today at 40% off. The experts love Simply Safe, and we do too. It was named the best home security system of 2023 by U.S. News and World Report. Simply Safe is comprehensive protection for the entire family with advanced sensors that detect break ins, fires, floods, and more. And the high definition cameras for both inside and out really spot things. It's powered by 24 7 professional monitoring. For less than a dollar a day, half the cost of traditional home security. 
With new 24-7 lifeguard protection and the smart alarm wireless indoor camera, the monitoring agents can see and speak to intruders, helping stop crime, telling them to go right now before the police show up. A powerful technology exclusively from Simply Safe. Satisfaction is backed by Simply Safe's money back guarantee. Try Simply Safe for 60 days risk free. If you don't like it, return it for your system for a whole full refund. For a limited time, save 40% on the new system with a fast protect plan. Visit simplysafenori.com. That's simplysafenori.com because there's no safe like Simply Safe. Called her up, put her on our local show, and then brought her over to Coast to Coast when I started doing it. Was it sent to you, or did you see it online? Uh, I saw it at the bookstore. The bookstore. And you know what? Her, her husband, too. Really nice guy. Joe. Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I miss her a lot. And then, and then you met, uh, let's see, didn't you meet Karen Dahlman, our Ouija board expert, on an airplane? Uh-huh. I was going to <laughs> Vegas, and she was sitting right next to me talking about Ouija boards. And I went, jeez. You never know how we meet people. She's still one of the only people who likes Ouija boards. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, huh? Yep. To the phones we go. Let's go to Jerry in Tennessee. Hey, Jerry, thanks for holding. Oh, hey, thank you, George. Thanks for giving me on, and happy Halloween to you and all your listeners. You too. I had a, I had an experience where with the actual sleep paralysis that scared the hell out of me, and I didn't talk to people about it for a long time until... You know, now the today's day and age, you can get on YouTube and Google anything and then hear other people having the experience. And I did listen to your program last night. <laughs> Basically, it was uh, the fall of 1984. I was in the United States Navy. I was part of the pre-commissioning unit for the USS Missouri, and I was one of the first arrivals at 32nd Street in San Diego. Well, they had to move us off because, uh, out of 32nd Street because they were running out of room on the, with the barracks, and they put some of us with good behavior out into the beach at Oakwood Apartments. And um, make long story short, they would give us a PM check, we would pay our rent. And then one night, I went, it must have been October, November, December, sometime of 84, before I went up to Long Beach in January of, 80, uh, of 85 with the USS Missouri being outfitted at Long Beach Naval Station. <laughs> but I woke up about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I couldn't move. I was completely and totally paralyzed. I, I couldn't move my head. I couldn't move my neck. I couldn't roll over. I couldn't do anything. The only, I, I just laid there, and, it, and, and I, I was like, oh, my God, and I felt like I had a huge weight on my chest. Now, I didn't see anything. I didn't, like, I've heard people say they saw that, like a hag or I, nothing right, like that. Right. I just felt like, it, you know, like there was a huge weight, heavy weight on my chest, and I could barely breathe. And I had the sensation that somebody was watching me, but I didn't see anything. Now, I can't tell exactly how long this lasted because it was so terrifying that it may have only been a couple of seconds, but to, but to me it seemed like it was hours. But finally, and I'll never forget it, it seemed like it took so much effort to be able to turn my head. And I, I, I worked so hard to finally turn my neck and I could look at the clock and... It, and, and um, and then finally it sort of wore off. It's sort of like when you when you sit on your leg too long and your leg goes to sleep. Like it gets, gets a little numb, yeah. Yeah, and then and it finally it started to come. Well, that's what happened was then it finally started coming back, and then I was able to move. And, and, and like the other individual, I think that called in about three, it scared, it scared me. I got up. I didn't go back to bed. I was, and I, for the first, oh, I had probably say for several days after that, I was scared to go to sleep because I didn't want it to happen again. It was so utterly terrifying. Oh. And, 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 and that's when, I, and then, you know, I, I didn't talk about it for a long time. I thought people would think I was crazy, but it did turn out to be, and you know, now that I understand, well, that's me and other people have had it too. It's called sleep paralysis. Now, I'd like to tell also your listening audience real quick, I did have a paranormal experience with my father when he passed. So I could just tell you real quick, and I'll be quick for your other callers. Sure. Callers in. Um, in January of 2007, uh, after a period of depression, my dad took his life in the garage of my parents' house. Oh, my God. And, yes, and um, terrible thing. Hope it doesn't ha ever happen to anyone that has to experience that. My my dad kind of got the idea he was a terrible father and to my and to my husband, to my mom, and my sister. And to make a long story short, I think that really drove a lot of his depression. And then he also had problems with tonight. Um, he spent many years cutting uh, down trees uh, with a chainsaw without mm -hmm. great protection. So he got terrible tinnitus. So that may have been part of it, too, because tinnitus can, can, I think, can cause... Uh, 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 oh, it drives you nuts. 
Yeah, absolutely. And he would sleep with like, uh, you know, like like the radio on or with the fan on because because it, yeah, it was that bad. <clears throat> but to make a long story short, um, it was several years after my dad died. And I was, I was about nine o'clock. I was out of my parents' house, and uh, my mom was away. She had gotten a boyfriend, and she was. But I would go over and check on the house every once in a while for her. And so I was there at the kitchen table at 9 o'clock at night, and I was just watching TV. And um, um, and then I heard a toy go off, just this noise of a toy. And and it was just like like um, just the sound of like a... Oh, like a little, like mechanic, like like a toy car, I guess, or something along that, along those lines. Right. So I started looking for it. I started trying to follow it, and I found underneath the the uh, underneath the, uh, one of the chairs in the living room. And this was kind of one of those chairs that has like the I don't know what you call it, but it's like cloth all the way down to the floor. Mm-hmm. And I lifted up the cloth and I reached underneath the chair, and then I found and I pulled this toy out. And what it was, it was a little semi truck about maybe oh. It's, six to eight inches long of a BP truck. It was white, and it had the little green BP sign with the yellow BP, and this little toy was going off. Now, I thought, if I open this battery, and I thought, if it doesn't have a battery in it, this is paranormal. You're going to freak say. out. Yeah. I'm going to just freak out, right. Well, here's the thing, though. I did open up the battery. It did have a battery in it, shut off. But when I checked the battery... Um, the battery was expired, and then when I put it up to my tongue, it didn't have much of a charge. So I put it in another, I put it in another um, um, nine volt, uh, uh, um, like a little uh, radio, it, but, but it didn't turn it on. Uh-huh. It was so weak that it didn't power it up. So I don't know what that was. Could that have been paranormal? Could that have been something that way, some way my dad was reaching out to me to let me know he was there? I don't know, but to this day, it's just something I really wonder about. If that was my father reaching out to me. With good, that good question. Was he a truck driver by any chance? Was he, no, he was not a truck driver. He was not. Boy, no, if, if, he, if, he, if he were, that would have been a definite sign, to be sure. Bob in North Dakota, thanks for calling. Hey, Bob, welcome. George, uh, happy Halloween the day after. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I've been a long-time listener, 14, 15 years, and first time I'm uh, actually on air, so welcome. You too, my friend. What do you got for us? Well, this goes back to 1993, about 30 years ago, Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, we had a couple of roommates. We lived in an apartment, and we decided we wanted a house, a little bit more privacy, you know, so we looked in the paper and Back then, it was just ads, Sunday and Monday and Wednesday, you know, looking for the classifieds for a house to live in. Well, we found an older one. It was a four-bedroom home. Uh, moved into it. You know, a month or so went by. Uh, his girlfriend came from northern Minnesota because he was from out of town. Okay. And we found out she brought a Ouija board. Oh, boy. With us. And I know your feeling of a Ouija board. I've heard all the stories of who you spoke to in the past. And there, you know, that night we played Ouija, and the lights flickered off and on. Um, the water in the bathroom actually turned on the hot water faucet. There was an old one where you had to spin it. I mean, there's no easy way to turn it on. And then we also found out there was somebody with us in the house. You know, was answering yes, who was answering no. And it spelled out a, a person's name, name is Zach, Z-A-K. And Zach was eight years old, supposedly. And, you know, we, I guess we thought it was kind of cool just going through it. You know, we were 25 years old, young. Sure. Uh, we thought we'd keep going. We played for the night, went to bed for a while, and we got up again. The water started running again, and we heard footsteps from the bathroom across the living room. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it didn't seem like a large person at all, but it was loud enough. And we had this old bird Berber carpet, and that's, that's kind of what it sounded like. We knew it was boots. That's and a great story. The family room light flickered more. It, it just kept happening. Didn't think much of it. And the second night, um, once again, we played the Ouija board. She pulled it out again, and she asked all the questions. Oh. It just seemed she knew what was going on. I guess the more you ask it, the more happens, supposedly. Whatever the, what, what, whatever the entity was, he was coming through that board, Bob. He was coming through the board, you, you know, and then he left for the weekend. The next weekend, I watched his dog. Dog stayed with me. Um, the night that I went to sleep, George, the dog started freaking out at the foot of the bed because he stayed with us, you know, and slept with us in the bed and, and everything. And uh, he's growling. He's really antsy. 
and looking at the doorway, and I look, and we loved this old house. It was dark. We loved to sleep in it. And I saw like a smoky swirl or a black swirl in the doorway headed up towards the ceiling. And this was a lot blacker than, than the old dark room that we lived in. Yeah. And it kind of moved its way on the ceiling. It swirled over above me. And I put the, I remember putting the covers over my head. I was cold. Uh, blankets were actually covering my mouth and my nose. And then in a split second, it seemed like it swirled. It disappeared. It looked like up into the vent, into the heater vent. Dog instantly shut up, uh, calmed down. I had popped up out of bed, turned every light on in the house, and everything seemed to be normal back then. You know, and every, we never did play the game. Uh, again, they returned home. I told them what happened. Didn't really believe me. You know, I guess we spoke about it a little bit, but I keep wondering. Uh, you know, there was an old tornado in Fargo that passed through in 1957 that leveled North Fargo. They had some yeah, people in the fatalities. Yeah, did somebody get hurt? Did a child get hurt or something? That uh, I still wonder to this day, and that was 30 years ago. That's probably true. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate the call. Next up, George in Georgia. Welcome to the show. Hey, George. Hey, George. It's an honor to speak to you. You too. Great name, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Ditto. <laughs> um, I listen to you every night on my 1937 Crosley Super 6. <laughs> well, a classic. And I just I love old radios. Um, anyway, I, uh, I live in Savannah, but I grew up in Miami in Coral Gables near the old Biltmore Hotel. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. It was built in 1920. It's an old one. I've heard of it, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very haunted. Um, I've got quite a few stories about it, but uh, one in particular, we used to put our John boat in the um, Gables waterway and paddle up behind it, and we'd run across the, um, the golf course to get to the hotel. Now, the, um, the hotel became a VA hospital during World War II, and it closed in the late 60s, and they used to have a morgue there, and the morgue had mysteriously caught fire and burnt to the ground. Oh. Back, back in the 60s, it was full of bodies. And um, When it burned down? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, the, it was still a, the hospital was still open then. And, uh, I mean, the place sat vacant for many, many years, uh, you know, several decades, before the city of Coral Gables um, started renovating it because it's on the National Register of Historic Places. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I remember one night we got into the hotel. This is back in the late 70s, early 80s. And we were on the second floor, and me and a friend of mine were going, you know, down the hallway. And, of course, we're, we're not supposed to be there, obviously. <laughs> um, and we're opening doors. And looking inside, you know, the place was still full of hospital stuff, hospital beds, whatnot. And as we're walking, we hear footsteps. And my friend would say, stop, stop, listen. And we heard footsteps, and then they'd stop. And we were the only ones in there. And, and clearly they were footsteps. You heard those. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we both just looked at each other. We, you know, we had a flashlight. We had a flashlight. And, I mean, we weren't there to vandalize or anything. We just were looking around. I mean, yeah. Like I said, I mean, I was, a, you know, we were teenagers, you know, 15, 16 years old. Um, I mean, this was a cool place. I mean, I remember before they raised the level of the pool, I mean, the, they had a, the pool was 21 feet deep. It was fed through the Gables Waterway. That's huge. Back, back in the, oh, yeah, absolutely, back in the 1920s. I mean, Johnny Weisfeller used to give exhibitions there. And whatnot, they had beautiful grandstands. I mean, this hotel has a 13 floor. There's actually a 13 on the in the elevator. So, um, but we went we went down this hall. We opened every door, and we went through uh, another door to another part. But when we turned around after we we had listened, we had heard the footsteps. We turned around to start leaving. And my friend stopped me and said, look, don't you see that? I'm like, what? Because every door is closed. And you, opened, and you opened all of them? We opened all of them. 
and didn't close any of them. No, sir. Somebody did, to be sure. Well, we're wrapping things up, folks. That's Ghost to Ghost for 2023. We'll do it again next year, my friends, and uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow night on the program as well. And, uh, thank you for participating. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lonehood, Sean Ladasour, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burles, Tim Banal, George Knapp, and Ian Punnett, I'm George Norrie somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.